Welcome to the webinar towards energy efficient retail refrigeration. My name is Mary Najima, and I'm your moderator for this webinar, brought to you by the Kigali Energy Cooling Program, United Nations Industrial Development Organization, and the Institute of International Refrigeration. First, I would like to ask Mr. Dijia Kulom to, to kick off this webinar. Mr. Dija Kulom is the Director General of that institution, is that of the Institute of the International Refrigeration. And Dija, I welcome you to this webinar. The floor is yours. Good afternoon. Retail refrigeration is important all over the world, and we need efficient and sustainable equipment. Not only sustainable refrigeration equipment, but moreover, sustainable supermarkets taking into account all aspects. UNIDO, the United Nations Industrial Development Organization and the IIR, the International Institute of Refrigeration, signed a contract at the end of 2018 in order to build recommendations for sustainable supermarkets, especially in developing and warm countries. The workshop will present some of the outcomes of the project. First, my Deputy Director General, Ina Colombo, will present the results of a survey undertaken to identify the barriers to overcome energy efficiency and achieve free refrigeration systems in the retail sector. Jacques Gilpa, former IR President of the section dedicated to biology and food technology, and the main contributor to that project, will present the technical report. Case studies will be presented by Rogerio Marson Rodriguez, Rodation engineer manage, Engineering Manager at Electrofrio Refrigeração LTDA in Brazil, and by Frank Cassosi, a branch manager at Capital Shoppers in Uganda. I hope that you will then have some time for questions and answers, and UNIDO will conclude the workshop. Enjoy the on-site online meeting. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Dijo. Thank you, Mr. Dijo, for setting out the stage. Now I would like to invite Ina Colombo, the co-author of the technical report, to present about the survey results with barriers for the adoption of energy efficient technology in the retail refrigeration industry. Ina is the deputy director of the Institute of International Refrigeration. Ina, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mary. Uh, so we done a survey that was diffused in our network at the network of UNIDO last year, end of, end of last year, and I'm going to show you some of the results. So from this result, we received 100 and 54 responses, full responses, because a lot of people started and didn't finish the, the questionnaire. Within those 54, you've got 84 responses from Article 5 countries, and we had uh, 70 responses from non-Article 5 countries. Within those 144, we've got 56% from consultant and academics, 5% from supermarket technical and feasibility manager, 22% from technology providers, and 80% from installers. Uh, on the right uh, table, you can see the top 10 countries that answered the survey. And the three first ones were 18 responses from France, 13 from Uganda, and 11 from Italy. And based on all the questions, uh, it was stated that 38% have already been involved with energy efficiency action in retail uh, refrigeration, and 53 are interested of being involved in such action. So we identified three barriers that um, slow down the adoption of energy efficiency technology in the retail refrigeration industry. So we've got the technical barriers which are mainly uh, related to the lack of local technician to ensure commissioning and maintenance of non-conventional refrigeration system. 
you can see some of the questions that we ask, such as, is there a lack of technical capacity among the, uh, the local technician to install and man maintain energy efficiency refrigeration equipment? And you can see that the majority said that is high lack of technical capacity. And you can even see that it, it, uh, at least 43% said it's considerable, the lack of technical capacity. Also, we did ask to what degree do you need to assist, assistance for foreign engineers and installers when performing energy efficient refrigeration technology. And you can see that the majority said high, is um, a high degree of, they need the assistance from foreigner and engineer uh, installers, foreigners. <clears throat> also, we've got the social barriers, okay, related to the acceptance of the risk associated with investing in new technology. Uh, from the question where we ask, which is are the following risks do you think is the biggest barrier to implementation of energy efficient refrigeration technology? You can see that more than 50% said it's equally the financial and the technical risk. Um, it's, it's important to mention that the perception of the disruptive technologies such as solar cooling, um, three-term system and adiabatic cooling are cautions. And most of the, respons uh, uh, the responses are, I don't know, or are not suit suitable to my country, okay? Where you've got positive responses for more conventional technologies such as CO2, ammonia, hydrocarbon. And the last one is the uh, economic barriers, mainly related to the cost of the investment, which was considered to be the most important factor when occurring a new refrigeration uh, installation and equipment. You can see the question where we ask, what is the most important factor when acquiring a new refrigeration installation equipment? And you've got the following answers. 60% for the environmental impact, 22% energy efficiency, 20% the availability of local competency and technician, 70% maintenance and operating cost, and 25% the investment cost. Um, in addition to those barriers, we, the, the, the response from the participant uh, mentioned that the, the majority respond, respond that environmental impact is not at all important when acquiring a, a, a new refrigeration installation equipment. Uh, you can see on the question of what is the less important factor when I create a new refrigeration installation equipment, 42% answer environmental impact, the environmental impact. Um, also, we, uh, we did ask the question, which do you consider to be the more important to promote change management? And more than 65% believe that the implementation should be coming from the government compared to 35% coming from corporate policy. So we did ask, uh, ask questions concerning the, 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 to know the status of the implementation of uh, some uh, refrigeration, uh, retail refrigeration systems. And we give the choice to the, par to the participant to answer if they know, if it's suitable to the country, if it's not yet, but feas uh, feasibility to be proven if they're not sure. To mention yes, but in the medium to long term, also in the near future or already implemented in the country. So these are the following for the following technologies. We had for ammonia, more than 50% uh, 
stating that it's already implemented in the country, either Article 5 or non-Article 5 countries. Concerning uh, carbon dioxide refrigerant, we had uh, more than 40% already implemented in the country, but you can see it's not Article 5, Article 5 countries where CO2 carbon refrigeration is, we've got very positive feedback, but still need uh, uh, the feasibility to be proven or in the near future for Article 5 countries. Also, we did we asked question concerning HFO and low global warming potential refrigerant. Um, you can see that the answer is already implemented in the country, but we can see that most of these response are from non-Article 5 countries. But we've got good feedback concerning the, the article, Article 5 countries, and hydrocarbon is more or less the same answer. Um, the position of the correspondent regarding other possible technologies such as three-term system, adiabatic cooling, and solar system are more mitigated. And mostly, as a, there are similar questions, and they mostly answer feasibility to be proven, not suitable for my country, or I don't know, for the majority. But it is important to note that adiabatic cooling of, of condensers is considered to be already implemented by 25% of the correspondents of Article 5 countries and 9% from non-Article 5 countries. So the conclusion, the conventional technology, such as ammonia, carbon dioxide, HFO, low global warming potential blends, hydrocarbons, are already been implemented in Article 5, called five country. Uh, according to the majority of the responses, but still uh, they need feasibility to, to be proven. Okay. The development of those technology to replace all HFC system is expected in the future. None of them were uh, definitely assessed as not suitable to the country. It's been stated many times that the demonstration action needs to be proven of those technologies, those, te those techniques, such as HFO and also CO2. And the confidence of the future technology that we call disruptive technologies seems rather low, as those technologies require proof of feasibility or are not being or have been assessed as not suitable for some country, mostly like to, uh, due to the lack of knowledge of those technologies. So now I give the floor to uh, Jacques Gilpa. Hello, good morning, good uh, afternoon or good night, uh, depending on when you are. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to, to, to introduce you the pres this presentation, to, to make this presentation. And uh, this presentation is how to have uh, display cabinets and retail refrigeration with the lowest impact on the environment. Uh, as an introduction, I think you know that uh, refrigeration is a huge energy consumption uh, responsive and uh, up to 50% of the energy bill of a supermarket may be related to refrigeration. And if you have a small supermarket, it can go up to 70%. Uh, so it is responsible of a large amount of, uh, uh, of, of gases, of, of carbon dioxide released due to energy consumption, but also due to the uh, refrigerant leakage into atmosphere because the refrigerants that are classically used in these equipments have very high uh, GWP and therefore uh, contributes widely to the uh, global change, climate change. So the question is how to reduce the energy consumption and uh, the environmental impact of retail refrigeration. 
and especially in Article 5 countries where the climate is sometimes uh, quite hot. So you have two kinds of responses to this question. The first one is to reduce at the maximum the energy consumption of the supermarket, of the refrigeration in supermarket, uh, because the cheapest energy is the energy that we do not consume. So at first, reducing at the maximum the demand, the refrigeration demand of your display cabinets. And the second uh, response is about the leakages. Of course, if you have large amounts of leakage in the atmosphere, it will contribute to the climate change. And therefore, when reducing leaks, you will reduce the environmental impact of your refrigeration installation. And the second category of response uh, we can propose to use, uh, of course, a uh, efficient refrigeration system working with low GWP refrigerants. And we'll have some examples of possibilities uh, that is possible to use. Uh, I must say that the first part of this presentation is based off an excellent uh, International Institute of Refrigeration Reference. Uh, it's a book that was published at the beginning of the year. And uh, I'm sure that it will help you in selecting the most efficient uh, system in order to reduce the environmental print of your uh, retail refrigeration. So it's available on the IIR website and do not hesitate to order it. Uh, it will help you making the right choice, the good choice. So how to reduce the energy demand in uh, retail refrigeration? Uh, when you make a heat balance of a display cabinet and of a supermarket, uh, it's, uh, everyone shows that the main responsible of heat load in a supermarket are air infiltration inside the cabinet. So please install doors of cabinets. That is one of the priority you have in order to make substantial savings because with efficient doors, you may reduce your energy consumption down to 50% quite easily. The second point, the second thing which is responsible of quite high heat load in display cabinets is lighting. So if you change the classic lighting you have in your display cabinets by efficient lights, as for instance, uh, uh, efficient fluorescent tubes or LED lights, you may reduce the refrigeration demand of six to 7%. And that's quite, uh, that's quite interesting. And the third point on the uh, energy balance of uh, display cabinets is about the uh, fan, the ventilation of the inside of the equipment. And therefore, if you use efficient fans, in your display cabinets, you can reduce the energy bill with a consequent five to four to five percent uh, from the total. So you can see that by using these three main points, you may reduce the demand of approximately 50, 55, up to 60 percent, and therefore you will make very interesting ener energy, um, reduce the energy demand. Uh, also, in the literature, you can find many other possibilities to reduce the demand. And I invite you to read the reference, uh, and especially the reference men mentioned above. But you can also make saving on defrost control, on strip heaters control, by installing radiant heat reflectors, etc., etc. So it's quite easy to reduce the demand, uh, and it's possible to do it when you buy new display cabinets on when just retrofitting existing display cabinets. So it is also proven that besides the technical points, it's also possible to make substantial savings just by having a preventive maintenance. And a smart preventive maintenance can lead to 10 up to 15% of additional savings. And that is, for instance, condenser cleaning, that is, for instance, filter changing, that is pressure and temperature control and modification of set points, etc. Another point, which is sometimes forgotten, is that a formation of your collaborators and their sensibilization to energy concern may lead to substantial additional savings, up to 2 to 5%. And for this, you can 
train them for having good loading procedures. You have to help them in order to check the door clothing of the display cabinets or of the warehouses. Uh, you can also help them to learn them to pull the night curtains and so on. So just formation may, may lead to a substantial savings. So you have here a lot of quick win options uh, that is possible to make to reduce the uh, energy demand in uh, display in, in, in supermarkets and in retail. Uh, of course, uh, something which is important also is to reduce the leakage because you probably know that in supermarkets you may have some uh, leakage rates of about 15 up to 30 percent per year. It means that uh, you have a direct impact, of course, by, uh, emission, by emission of uh, refrigerants with high GWP in the atmosphere. But also it has a financial impact that is quite important because let's say if you have 100 kilograms of refrigerant and that, if that refrigerant costs 100 euro per kilogram, that has a, a direct financial cost that is not negligible. So besides this, once you have reduced the demand, when you have, once you have uh, enhanced your maintenance and your uh, loading procedures and so on, it is possible to have a look on the uh, efficient refrigeration systems by themselves and to propose to make working uh, with uh, low GWP uh, refrigerants. And for this, there are not many solutions, unfortunately. The first one is to use low GWP refrigerants, which are maybe pure refrigerants or possibly blends. And you can use this low GWP refrigerants by retrofitting your installation, if possible, if technically possible, and sometimes that is not possible. And if not possible, you have to change some parts, for instance, compressors, expansion valves, and so on of your installation. And, uh, the other possibility, of course, is to use natural refrigerants because natural refrigerants, as for instance ammonia, carbon dioxide, or hydrocarbons, have very low uh, GWPs. Of course, if you want to build a new installation, you'd better to use low GWP refrigerants, but also to use efficient display cabinets with all the possibilities of energy reduction that uh, represented uh, above. Uh, just Ina also said some words about the alternative technologies as for instance uh, solar cooling, three-term systems and uh, magnetic cooling and so on. But unfortunately, these technologies are not uh, mature enough in order to be proposed in retail, let's say in the 25, 50, 50 forthcoming years. So the use of a low GWP refrigerants uh, maybe a retrofit or a new installation, if not possible to make a retrofit. Of course, it's, that is the cheapest solution. The cheapest solution because it's a well-known technology. It requires relatively low technicity, which has, this technicity is uh, accessible to the wide majority of uh, uh, maintenance providers and installers. Uh, what kind of refrigerants? Um, I say that at present, uh, the, the candidates for the replacement of, uh, of R22 and R404A are, uh, are numerous. Uh, we don't know exactly which one will be the final selected, the final fruit which will be selected. Uh, they may be uh, blends of uh, HFO, HFC, or uh, HFO or hydrocarbons. But at present, uh, we have we heard of uh, different. Uh, different fluids, but uh, it's not uh, very stable and the final choice is not uh, made yet. Uh, these uh, fluids present uh, the characteristic to have a uh, glide and that is some, some, sometimes difficult to manage, but it can work. It can work and it can uh, help you. Uh, about the energy consumption, it's quite uh, uh, similar to existing technologies and depending on the refrigerant, it may be minus 10 or plus 15 uh, percent of energy consumption compared to, to, to a standard. Uh, 
So it's a possible choice, of course. It's a possible choice, but only if you do not have a long-term vision of your activity and of your supermarket. Because I do not think that uh, low GWP blends uh, or poor, pure uh, flu fluids, uh, chemical pure fluids, uh, are, is uh, really sustainable. Uh, so the second possibility is to use natural refrigerants, and I think that the next presentation will uh, describe you some of these technologies. So just some word on ammonia. Ammonia is a very efficient solution, which is uh, very energy efficient, uh, but unfortunately ammonia is uh, toxic and uh, has a low flammability characteristics, and therefore you need some uh, efforts in order to make safe installation and that applies some uh, somewhat higher level investment cost for this installation. Uh, otherwise, uh, the performances are very good, and especially if you use an ammonia system working on the water loop uh, for the cold distribution, and you may, uh, you may feed the chilled display cabinets with uh, chilled water, and if you need some uh, some frozen uh, display cabinets, you may use, for instance, carbon dioxide uh, condensing on the, the water loop in order to, pro to, to, to produce uh, negative temperatures. So that's something which is uh, very efficient. It's a proven reliability and a guaranteed uh, sustainability. Uh, another possibility is to use hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons is also a very efficient solution. It's quite easy to implement. Uh, but uh, it's uh, highly flammable, so uh, it requires some uh, precautions and uh, it implies to use uh, remote units. And uh, if you are in the display area, for instance, you can use remote units and the heat rejection is made on a, uh, on a water loop and the heat is rejected outside by the water loop. So uh, it's also um, a system which has a proven reliability it also has a very good sustainability, uh, but just to take care on the formation of technicians and because uh, when you have some maintenance uh, operation, it may be quite, uh, quite uh, dangerous and uh, be careful to the um, safety level of your installation. Uh, another uh, new, ref another refrigerant, natural refrigerant, is carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is an interesting alternative, and especially for countries where the temperature is not so high, and uh, because carbon dioxide has some uh, thermodynamics particularities, uh, and uh, due to these particularities, the efficiency is not so good compared to ammonia or hydrocarbons. So to mitigate this. Uh, quite uh, low energy performances. Uh, we have to use refrigeration cycles that are a bit more complex by using a parallel or series compressors. Uh, compression, you have uh, to use double expansion, uh, possibly with ejectors and so on. So uh, the, the installation working with carbon dioxide may be uh, quite efficient, but um, in counterpart, you have to uh, some highest investment cost and a quite higher technicity which is required to deliver some uh, performant installation. Uh, so when uh, a supermarket stakeholder is uh, looking of all this, uh, this question and this concern, uh, we may ask you, but what is the solution for, the, for a supermarket stakeholder? And must say that the best choice uh, depends on the priority and on the constraints of the supermarket stakeholder. And before taking a choice, you have to ask yourself some questions uh, in order to help you to make the right choice. And for instance, here you, you have a list of different questions that are useful to ask yourself. For instance, does your refrigeration need a deep change? Why, why does it need a deep change or not? Is the investment cost a major constraint for you? Uh, is the supply or spare parts of components a problem for you, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to ask yourself a lot of questions and something which can be recommended is to, f um, to bear on the uh, competencies and the feedback of uh, some of your colleagues that has to deal with the same type of uh, problems. 
Uh, here, for instance, we can uh, go in this uh, environment. Uh, the first thing to do is to, 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 to know your environment, to get closer for uh, the competent people. So um, I ask you some questions. For instance, are you aware of how to save, um, are you aware, uh, of how to save energy cost to run the refrigeration system? Uh, if not, you can uh, look for colleagues from you that can help you uh, in, uh, in, in selecting such system. Do you have experts around you? Can you engage them? Uh, do you, can you engage some, uh, some uh, academics, academic people in order to help you to make the right choice? Uh, but if you have some ideas on how to proceed, um, you can help people to make their own decision. And we invite you to build a, te to build a team uh, which, uh, can, uh, which is constitute, constituted by supermarket manager, by uh, local installers, uh, local experts and technicians in order to, to help you in making the right choice and to propose for your supermarket a long-term business and investment plan. So that know your environment in order to, 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 to to see the competent and to learn from competent people how to proceed with your, with your supermarket. And once you have uh, uh, identified the people that can help you, uh, you may go deep in deeps with uh, the, the technology will you will choose. Uh, and this uh, long-term business, business plan uh, may, be, uh, be, may be based on, the, uh, on different uh, techniques and, and, and at first ask yourself, uh, what is your main preoccupation? Uh, is it to minimize the investment cost or is it to minimize the environmental print of your uh, refrigeration system? If, if, if it is to minimize the, on the investment cost, uh, you may uh, retrofit, just make a retrofit of your display cabinets by uh, installing doors, for instance, by changing the fans, by changing the lightnings. Uh, that's better than nothing. Okay. Uh, if you need to change your uh, refrigeration installation, and if you have, don't have so much money, you may just make a retrofit of your installation, if technically possible. And therefore, you, you have before, of course, before making this retrofit, make sure that your installation doesn't present a leakage rate that is uh, redhibitory. Uh, if you have some um, other preoccupation and at first it's to minimize the environmental print uh, and the energy consumption of your system. Uh, there you have to, at first, I said it, select the most efficient display cabinets, don't forget this, but also you can consult your national ozone unit uh, to help you uh, in making the right choice and the adequate choice for your uh, installation. Uh, I think that we have to distinguish two different kinds of installations, the small ones, the small supermarkets and so on, uh, where um, uh, it's possible to use uh, either low GWP refrigerants or blends uh, and possibly uh, hydrocarbons, hydrocarbons with uh, uh, possibility of uh, direct expansion or by using uh, heat reduction on water loop, that's a possibility. Uh, and uh, if you have more larger refrigeration installation, you may use ammonia or uh, carbon dioxide or hydrocarbons uh, installation. That depends on uh, your reluctance by using these fluids on the, um, the regulation that may exist uh, on these fluids and so on. So um, you can help you in making, for making your decision, you can help you by uh, this uh, decision tree um, and that will help you to make the good choice and uh, must say that there is no bad choice. The choice you will make is the right choice because it is adapted to your uh, constraints. Uh, so uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, that's what I wanted to say. Uh, I think that at the end of the presentation, we have a time for questions and uh, answers. So I will be uh, available to answer your questions. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Jacques, for that insightful presentation. The next session is about successful case studies with energy efficiency in supermarkets. First up is a story of a Brazilian supermarket 
condo, which has converted to carbon dioxide refrigerant. Rogerio Mason Rodriguez will be presenting this section. Rogerio is a refrigeration engineering manager at Electroquio Brazil. For 23 years, he has worked at the company as the refrigeration engineering manager focused on the design and manufacture of refrigeration machines and systems for supermarkets and storage. In recent years, he has been dedicated to the development of refrigeration system solutions with natural fluids for application in commercial refrigeration. Rogerio, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Mary. Good afternoon to you in France. Good morning for us here in Brazil. It is a pleasure to be here to present the propane shiller project for coolant propylene glycol and condensing CO2 for application in commercial refrigeration. This project was developed by Eletrofrio in partnership with UNIDO and the Ministry of the Environment of Brazil. Uh, like Mary said, my name is Marçon and I am an engineer manager of Eletrofrio, a Brazilian company manufacturer of refrigeration equipments for supermarkets. All this work was motivated by the Montreal Protocol and Kigali Amendment, also this last one not uh, yet been approved by the Brazilian government, but this approval should take place after the end of the pandemic of the coronavirus when the work in the National Congress should return to normality. In Brazil, HCFC R22, main R22, has been used for more than 40 years as the only refrigerant for supermarket refrigeration system, big quantity of R22. In function of the Montreal Protocol, the replacement of HCFCs by the HFCs was started mainly by R404A and R134A. However, the Gala amendment will bring us a new need, also we need HCFCs too, like we did with HCFCs. And we understood that the final solution will be for the use of natural refrigerants. Our options propane, that is a flammable fluid, CO2, carbon dioxide, that operate at high pressures, and ammonia, that is a toxic fluid. We choose propane and CO2 mainly because we have experience in CO2 systems and propane is more friendly than ammonia. Let's look at an example of a traditional refrigeration systems applied in supermarkets in Brazil. This is a rack with parallel compressors for HCFC or HFC. Here, we have a flow chart that presents the traditional supermarkets where we have in the machine room a rack which, with HFC. It's a direct expansion system. A big quantity of HFC circulate between cabinets and cold rooms, in medium and low temperature. Outside, there is a condenser and more HFC. Or we have here a big quantity of HFC or HCFC, R404A, 134A, R22. This is a traditional supermarket in the past, or I believe that until now here in Brazil. This is the propane rack developed for this project to work with propane. 
same supermarket. This is a new condition with propane-like primary fluid in an indirect expansion system without HFC or HCFC, only natural refrigerants. Propane, propane glycol used for medium temperature and subcritical CO2 used for low temperature in cabinets and cold rooms. Only glycol and CO2, propane only in machine room. Outside, there is a dry cooler that cools the water to condense the propane inside the machine room. In this project, we do not have HCFC, HCFC, only natural refrigerants, glycol in cabinets and cold rooms for medium temp. In low temp, only CO2 in a supercritical condition, cold rooms and cabinets. But pay attention, the propane, we use the propane only inside the machine room and inside a protect box where is the compressor, the heat exchanger. In the beginning of this work, we traveled to know what was done in other countries that we were more advanced in the use of natural refrigerants. It was when we went to visit several supermarkets in Europe that were using propane as primary fluid. This supermarket uh, were a, a, a example for us to understand how to use propane in supermarkets. We also went to no projects developed in North America too, beyond the use of propane and uh, had to use CO2 in low temp too. This is a supermarket in California, the name is Whole Foods, that use propane to cool in the CO2 for medium and low temp. And we start to develop it uh, of the Brazilian project. This is the flow chart of the propane cooling system. Extremely simple and small. Simple to minimize the chance of failure. Small to contain as little propane as possible. We only have four components. Compressor, heat exchanger to condense the propane by water from dry cooler, the electronic expansion valve, and the heat exchange again to evaporate the propane and cool the glycol. Just four components. All the components inside a closed box, which has a permanent air exhaust system to ensure safety in the event of a propane leak, supervised by a propane presence sensor and a remote monitoring system. All these components is, are inside the box. Like this box. This is the most important part of this project, which is the definition of the control zone. The only place where there is the circulation of propane, where all safety measures must be taken. All the components of the refrigeration system is inside the bo this box. That is inside this box is our control zone, where we taking uh, all safety measures that we need to work with a, a safety system. This is uh, the, our proto first prototype of the equipment used to show the Brazilian market the work that was being developed. And this is the design of each propane shielder model. 25 kilowatts of refrigeration capacity with two kilos of propane. Each box, each model, we use only two kilos of propane to produce 25 kilowatts of refrigeration capacity in medium temp with minus seven uh, evaporation temperature. The Unido and the Ministry of the Environment of Brazil have chosen a supermarket here in Brazil, of course, to receive the demonstrative project. The 
Condor Supermarket in Curitiba City was chosen. Uh, this, this supermarket, the name is, the brand is Condor, uh, is here in the same city that we are here, uh, where is uh, Eletrofrio. Uh, good advantage for developing this project too. This is a medium temperature cabinet. Very, very important. The refrigerant in this cabinet is the propylene glycol. Inside the supermarket, no propane circulation, only glycol and CO2. Only glycol and CO2 inside the supermarket. Propane is just inside the machine room. Propane circulates exclusively inside the modules in the machine room. In this project, there are six modules. Three on the left side and three in the right side. This is the graph of the temperature monitoring of the propylene glycol carried out during the third days uh, in the commission phase of the project. Temperatures within project expectation be day or night set point. We use uh, two set points with uh, glycol for medium temp to cabinets and cold rooms and condensing CO2. Minus three during the day, minus two during the night. And the, the result, it was the same result when I, we use R134A, for example. To consolidate the project in terms of energy efficiency, Comparison was made with another store of the same city, or of Condor, but that used HCFC R134A as primary fluid in the Schiller. The difference between both was on the primary fluid. The first store with propane, and the second store with R134A. The result was favorable to the propane project that provided reduction of 3.5 in energy consumption. The system with propane was more efficient than the system with R134A in 3.5%. We have a system with a natural refrigerant only, propane, glycol, and CO2 is more efficient than the other system with R134A, more glycol and supercritical CO2. Do not be afraid. To work with propane, you need to have knowledge, procedure, and respect. Ever. Thank you very much for the attention. Pleasure for me to participate in this event. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rogerio, for that informative presentation. As you can case study, is about a supermarket in Uganda called Cactus Shoppers. Though it has not yet converted to energy efficient, energy efficient HFC free technologies, we use the opportunity to apply the decision tree that was discussed earlier. I'll stand in for Frank Cassosi to take you through this presentation as he wasn't able to join us for the webinar. This, this, this presentation is about the decision-making procedure in local supermarkets in developing countries, the procedure towards adopting energy efficient and HCFC-free refrigeration systems for supermarkets. Well, I can do it. The supermarket is a local 
supermarket in Uganda and it doesn't have like a storage room within the supermarket or its supplies are from are from outside and they only accommodate what they can handle in the supermarket. Once servicing, once services are needed, they have an outside company, local company that does the servicing and maintenance of the refrigeration system. The supermarket has no distribution center nor a storage room and they only have fridges for the food and any other perishables in the supermarket. However, though they haven't converted to climate, climate friendly refrigerants, they, they save energy by using covers on the open display fridges and the cabinet fridges with blinders provided by the manufacturers. Most of their, their systems are imported are uh, imported from the UK, UAE, and some of them are from Turkey. The open freezers are covered at night with a refrigeration cover. Being a small supermarket, most of the decisions are influenced by the customers that come to the supermarket. The customers pass on the, the, the input to the staff which the staff passes on to the managers and then the director of the supermarket that make the decisions. After having an interview with them, they had some takeaways from the supermarket. First of all, they didn't know about, about the phasing out of HFCs in their supermarkets since all that information about a cold chain is handled by the local service providers who do the refill when needed and also service the supermarkets when need be. From the, from the decision tree, they are able to learn about the phasing out of the R22, which is currently in use in their, in their, in their systems and they got to know that it has a negative effect on the environment. They also learned about local refrigeration manufacturers in Uganda, for which they had no idea because they used to imp they import all their systems from abroad. Another takeaway from the decision tree was, a, was about the alternative energy efficient technologies they can apply in order to save more energy costs in their supermarket. Okay, can you take the control of the of the slides? Mary, have you finished? Uh, I'll go to the next. I couldn't take control. Our next session is the question and answers. We've received so many questions in the chat, which I'll be able to read out to the panelists and they'll be answered. Not all the questions might be answered during the session, but if any are left out, we shall answer them after the webinar. I'll read out the questions. Our first question, uh, the first question is about, what about the loss of energy efficiency by using water low temperature difference increase? The question is directed to Jack. Uh, yes, uh, here I'm back, and thank you for, for the question. So the question is, uh, how does the investment cost for the air 209, so propane, uh, to the uh, 134A chile? Uh, according to my knowledge, but I think that our colleagues from Brazil can uh, give some more information, uh, due, just due 
to uh, safety concern, uh, propane remain a bit higher investment costs compared to uh, 134A. Uh, according to my uh, feedback and my experience, it's about 10 up to 20% uh, higher in terms of cost. Uh, but uh, the, the return on, on investment is quite short because uh, it has been proven that uh, propane has better energy performance at uh, 134A. So uh, an investment cost a bit higher, but uh, functioning cost and uh, uh, operating costs that are lower. So globally, uh, in the medium short term, let's say three, three, four years, you would better to use uh, propane. Of course, uh, if uh, safety concern uh, have been taken into account. And the example of uh, our friend from Brazil is uh, uh, very demonstrative. And uh, I think that that one of the possibility to use propane uh, by a safe uh, point of view. Uh, another question about the Brazilian supermarket case. Uh, what is the surface of the store? Uh, so I, I think that I will give the, 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 the microphone to our friend from Brazil to answer this, this question. Okay, thank you. I, I will answer the first question. Uh, how does the investment cost for the propane chiller compare with the HEFC 1348 chiller? Uh, we compare the supermarket that we assembled here. Uh, one supermarket with uh, 134A plus uh, glyco and CO2. The other supermarket, the demonstrative supermarket, we use propane, glyco, and CO2. The difference, the investment, it was 5%. The propane is uh, higher, only 5% if you compare the same supermarket with 1348. Okay, 5% is the, the, the difference. Uh, the supermarket uh, thinks that this is a, a, a small difference. And during this year, 2020, they both more two stores, two supermarkets with the same systems that you, we assembled last year. So I believe that uh, he believes this is a, a small difference for to have a, a, a natural refrigerant in a supermarket, a supermarket 100% natural. The second question is, um, what is the surface of the store? Uh, the surface is 3,000 meters, square meters, 3,000 square meters. It's a, a medium supermarket here in Brazil. Uh, small supermarket has uh, 1,000, 1,500 meters. Uh, a big supermarket, uh, five, six thousand square meters. So this, the Condor store is a, a, a medium supermarket. What are the safety rules applied regarding uh, propane, attacks or others? We use the attacks regulation to define the, 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 pro the project here in Brazil. Okay. Okay, uh, and thank you for, re for your response, uh, Rogerio. Uh, I have another question uh, from, him for, uh, from Matthias, uh, who, who has a quick question related to the supermarket case study. Uh, I imagine that many supermarkets and convenience stores in developing countries do not belong to the large supermarket chains. Instead, instead they might be a small size family-owned business. How can those small-sized business get access to the fundings? <laughs> that's a good question. Um, uh, so perhaps that's, uh, it's more in the hand of uh, Fukuya or uh, Marius, this type of, of question. Otherwise, but by a purely technical point of view, when you have very small installations, uh, I think that it is not recommended to have centralized cold production units and that you can use remote units uh, with the possibility of condensing on water loop, as I presented in my presentation. Or if you have a very small supermarket, why not having heat rejection directly inside the uh, supermarket? But uh, this requires having some uh, air conditioning facilities that are able to uh, accept this uh, heat, additional heat load due 
to these uh, remote units. But I, I prefer, personally, I prefer having remote units, small remote units working very easily with propane, for instance, and with uh, heat reduction and water loop. That is a quite good solution for small supermarkets. But about the fundings, um, uh, in uh, Fukuya or Mayuri, do you have some, uh, some uh, elements on this point? If I may, then thank you. Thank you, Matthias, for the question. Um, it is not easy. Um, that's why we wanted to have this uh, decision uh, tree uh, to made, be made available for those people. Um, the, the motor protocol and the international funding uh, uh, at this moment will not be financing the energy efficiency options. Um, if it may be in, in the next stage of the current uh, uh, project, uh, HCFC management plan, um, it could uh, be funding the refrigerant uh, conversion, however, not for the energy efficiency. And therefore, if any uh, funding is needed, it needs to be uh, financed by the local um, uh, financing institute. Um, but uh, as you might have seen, uh, because the slide was moving back and forth, even in the Uganda's case, they, that, that size of supermarket does not have their, its own cold storages. It has the, it, they use this, the, the display as a cold storages. And therefore the, the responsibility of keeping the cold uh, um, uh, food and uh, the perishable products are uh, delegated to the suppliers. And therefore, small, uh, that, that's actually one of the options probably we can, uh, they, they, you, maybe they usually do, um, that they only order things uh, for when, when needed, um, which uh, about, the, uh, the, the about the capacity, as, as much as the, the, the capacity of their own uh, displays, uh, commercial displays can hold uh, so that they can keep the product cold but not uh, uh, more than that. So that means they need to require more frequent delivery, but I think that's what they do even, even in a medium sized uh, supermarket in Uganda. Um, Mary, if you have anything else? Pretty much you've covered everything for the question. Then we can maybe move to other questions. To the next. So this next question is about Jack's presentation. What about the loss of efficiency by using water low temperature difference increase? S sorry, can, can you repeat uh, the question? What about the loss of efficiency by using water low? Uh, but by what uh, difference? Of course, I, I, I can give you a um, a quite strange answer. It, it depends on the size of the intermediate heat exchanger. Uh, classically, when you have uh, five degrees of pinch, uh, you loss about 10% of energy efficiency. So the refrigerant you use may have, uh, must have a very, very good, uh, a very better efficiency in order to balance this uh, uh, barrier, the additional barrier added by the heat exchanger between uh, the refrigerant and the water. So that's the magnitude of the uh, difference of energy consumption. It means globally, uh, a pinch of five degrees, you may count on 2% of additional energy consumption by degrees you have lost in the heat exchanger. So it's about 10%. But if you use a most efficient refrigerant, uh, therefore, you may have some substantial savings globally. I uh, think we have uh, our, our other. Um, that that yes, was uh, yes. That was a, the question of Rashad. Yes, mm. uh, and another There's one. No for, on. Yes, another one. Uh, uh, we know that open refrigerated display cabinets are, proposed, uh, are purposely installed for ease of access to the customers. Uh, could be better during the period with COVID-19, of course, uh, to have a touching doors. Uh, how about saving that can be possible to obtain from optimizing the air curtain? 
and uh, against using physical doors. Uh, of course, air curtain uh, are um, sometimes more efficient uh, than nothing. Uh, we now for 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 quite a, a high quality uh, display cabinets, you may have triple air curtain. But what is something is sure is that an air curtain is not as efficient as a door. Uh, the best efficiency of an air curtain may be about 75-80 percent, uh, because air curtain you, you is very sensitive to pressure drops and to air velocity fluctuations. So the efficiency of air curtains may be good, but not as good as doors. So of course, in the present uh, situation with uh, this virus, uh, opening and closing door may be a problem, but you can also say that when you put, you pick a product in the display cabinet, you look at it and you put it back, uh, the problem of contamination is uh, remains uh, remains existent. So sure that at present uh, this uh, problem of uh, virus uh, should uh, be in favor of uh, just air curtains. But when you are looking on energy efficiency, doors remain the best solution in order to avoid air to come in the display cabinet. Uh, another question, the disadvantage of using ammonia in retail. Uh, ammonia, I, I said it, is uh, toxic and also low flammable. So all what was said on the propane uh, by our friend from Brazil, by uh, Rogerio, uh, remains uh, useful, remained uh, from actuality with ammonia, it means that it is not possible in our country, in our Western Europe countries, it is not possible to use uh, direct ammonia inside the supermarkets. You have to use a secondary refrigerant loop. And um, it has also a disadvantage ammonia. It's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it smells, it smells, uh, it has a very, very, um, very bad uh, smell. And uh, therefore, if you have even a very, very small leakage, uh, it may have um, uh, an odor that is uh, really uh, uh, discouraging for the supermarket. So you have to put it in a machinery room, which is very, very, very good, very precisely separated from the display area uh, for this reason of uh, odor, of uh, toxicity, and also from uh, low flammability. So we have the problem of uh, using the secondary refrigerant loop. If you have low temperature display cabinets, you have to use uh, ammonia, for instance, uh, uh, sorry, uh, carbon dioxide uh, systems, or possibly uh, remote units working with a very low charge of hydrocarbons directly in the uh, display cabinet. And if you are using this technology, you may use a very, very low amount of uh, propane, uh, as for instance, less than 200 grams for um, a display cabinet working with a remote tunic, working with propane and condensing on the glycol water loop, for instance. So the problem with uh, ammonia is that it is uh, not allowed to use it directly in a supermarket or in places where you can have uh, people uh, which are not uh, specialists or uh, refrigeration technicians. Another question to you, Ja, is what is the expected period of return on investment on R290, so carbon dioxide, glycol, and carbon dioxide systems? So, 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 sorry, I have some difficulty to hear you. Sorry, Marie. What is the expected period of return on investment on R290, glyco, and carbon dioxide system? Okay, the, the, the payback time, that's it, that's uh, your question. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
if you make the choice of having a solution with ammonia and uh, possibly uh, additional carbon dioxide or uh, propane for low temperature display cabinets, uh, cost is not your major concern. So to answer your question, when you have such system, ammonia with uh, secondary loops and so on, you, have, you are more expensive than direct expansion system working with HFC. Uh, but the return on investment uh, is quite uh, short, let's say around three, three to five years, for two reasons. The first one is that uh, leakages are a very um, cost effective on uh, the exploitation cost. I told you when you have now in Western Europe, that is not the case in Article 5 countries, but in Western Europe, when you have a refrigerant that costs about 100 euro per kilogram, and when you have a leakage of 100 kilograms, it's a, a very important cost. So that's uh, the, the first, uh, the, the first uh, origin of um, the, the payback time. And the second one is uh, global energy performance. When you are using this type of systems, ammonia-based, which is a very efficient refrigerant, you may have some energy costs that are lower than supermarkets working with a classical air 404A. So globally, you may have some payback times. It depends, but between three and, uh, three and six, six years, and possibly a bit more if your uh, installation doesn't present so much leaks. Because one of the most important costs with the uh, HFC installation is the cost of leaks. So it's difficult to give a precise value, but uh, between three, three and six years, that must be the uh, payback, the classical payback time. Thank you for that answer. Next question is, the, is to Rogerio. Which safety standards were you considering for the installation of the propane chiller? Are they national or international? Uh, sorry, could you repeat, please, what the question is? Which safety standards were you considering for the installation of the propane uh, chiller? Are uh, they international? international, uh, international regulations, because here in Brazil, we do not have a specific regulation in a national regulation. Huh? And our country used the international regulation and translate to Portuguese to use here. But it, it's an international regulation. Okay. There's another question for you as well. What is the evaporation temperature in the chillers level for the propane system? How do you achieve the freezing level? How do you, is it a two-stage refrigeration system? Is it a cascade solution with CO2 as main refrigerant in the lower refrigeration temperature? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, the first question, what is the evaporation temperature in the chiller? The, te the evaporation temperature is minus seven, minus seven to cool in the glycol, uh, minus four, uh, minus three, minus four. The first, the, the first part of this cascade system, we evaporate the propane with minus seven and cool in the glycol with minus three, for example. And we use this glyco with a minus three degrees Celsius to condense in the CO2. Or we use CO2 in low temp. And this CO2, it's a uh, work with a, a subcritical condition. Uh, and the CO2 is condensing by glyco with minus three degrees Celsius. Uh, I, I use the CO2 in direct direct expansion in cold rooms and cabinets. And the evaporation temperature in the cold rooms and cabinets is minus 26. It's a cascade system. Propane, glyco, and CO2. Glyco for medium temp, and CO2, direct expansion CO2 in low temp. Thank you. So uh, someone is asking about if it's expensive to retrofit remote equipment with advanced control systems? The, 
the question is about the uh, retrofit of remote uh, equipment. Yes. Uh, when you have remote equipments, you have small um, compressors, and generally it's uh, hermetic compressors. And therefore, uh, if you need to change something, because if you change refrigerant, you may have to change the, the capacity of the compressor. You, the, it's a volumetric, uh, volumetric uh, uh, parameter. And therefore, you have to change the compressor. It's, it's easier to change uh, the, the, the compressor. When you make a retrofit, you, it's sometimes better to change the compressor. It's sometimes useful to change the compressor and to change the uh, expansion valve. So uh, yes, it's, it is as expensive as if you have to, to, have a, to, 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 to buy a new installation. But that depends on the uh, technological uh, of the fluid you, you, you use. For instance, if you are using air 404A and that you want to change by an HFO, you have to change the compressor. Uh, if you select, uh, if you have an air 404A and you want to change it by a 4, 4, 448A, for, in, for, for instance, uh, you may keep uh, your compressor. So it depends. It depends. Uh, the, the price depends on uh, the, um, the, the fluid you used previously and the, few, the fluid you will use. It means that sometimes you have to change the compressor and therefore it's quite expensive. Otherwise, you may just change, in some cases, you may just change the refrigerant and it's a, it's a cheaper. So not uh, 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 retrofit remote equipment with advanced control systems. So what, uh, Enrique, what, what do you mean by advanced control systems? If Enrique can, can give some precision about, uh, about what he means by advanced control systems. Because otherwise, uh, changing refrigerant sometimes needs, requires to change the compressor and the expansion valves and so on. So it's uh, as expensive as, having, as buying a new installation. Perhaps at Roger, you have some uh, additional information on this question? Yes, I have. Uh, for example, the supermarket Condor here in Curitiba have old stores that uh, have the, the systems R134A, a Schiller no? with R134A, and Glyco and CO2. The same installation that we use in the demonstrative project of propane. Uh, uh, if, you do, if you Condor uh, wants to, to change these systems, uh, he needs only take off the chiller with R134A and put a new chiller with propane. It's very, very simple and cheaper because the glyco system and CO2 system maintain the same. We develop a system that uh, 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 is very easy to change in the future, but, uh, but you need just to take off the chiller with HFC or HCFC and put a propane shader in the same place uh, with all safety uh, that, the, that the propane needs. Yeah, but you, you are right because uh, yes, it's well known that using a secondary refrigerant loops is very interesting when uh, on this point uh, on this point of view. But if you, the, the previous installation was a direct expansion of R22. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the supermarket had to change everything in the supermarket, and that is unfortunately a bit uh, expense, more expensive than just changing the air 22 if technically feasible. But otherwise, you are right. When we are using secondary loops technologies, it's very easy to change the primary refrigerant loop, and especially if we have chillers. Perfect. Uh... If you have a direct expansion with R22, for example, you need to change all equipments, 
and it, it will be very, very expensive. But here in Brazil, we use secondary fluid like a propylene glycol in, uh, I believe that more than 10 years. At this moment, uh, I believe that uh, Brazil has 2,000, 2,500 supermarkets with propylene glycol uh, assembled in the last 10 years. Uh, if you need to, to change for propane or other solution, for example, you need to change just the house, the, the, the machine in the machine home, not to change the cabinets, not to change the, the cold rooms, for example. Yes, that is one of the advantage of uh, secondary the refrigerant system. Thank you for that answer. We've come to the end of the question and answer session. Maybe one, if you could, Rogerio, if you could just give briefly about the last question, how to, how do you service the R29, R290 chillers? Okay. We, uh, we have a, a, a big challenge uh, in the future, this year and the next years, that is uh, the capacitation. We need to train the technicians here in Brazil. Uh, at this moment, we have only one supermarket with propane like this project. Yeah, and this store is here in Curitiba in the same city where we are. Um, until the end of this year, we will have more three stores, two here in Curitiba and one in Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo is a, a city 400 kilometers from here. And we are, we are training our technicians in Sao Paulo too. At this moment, we have just one team with this capacitation and this team is here in Curitiba. Uh, and I start to train the, uh, the other team in Sao Paulo to have a capacitation, to have knowledge to work with propane with very, very safe. Thank Cap you, Paul. Capacitation, I believe that is the, the secret for you work with propane with safe. Thank you, Rogerio. We've come to the end of our question and answers. As a conclude, I would like to, to invite Dr. Fukuya in order to give the closing remarks. Dr. Fukuya works for UNIDO, the Department of Environment, and has managed environment and technology transfer projects in developing countries while working with two UN agencies. Prior to his 15 years of UN experience, he worked with the US and Japanese government, including the US Environmental Protection Agency. Dr. Fukuya, welcome. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mary. Um, I believe the discussion was very good. Um, thank, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Rogelio, and also Mr. Jack, and uh, also Ms. Mary. Thank you so much for all of your uh, contributions. So I'd like to thank you all for uh, staying until really the end of the webinar. Also uh, on site in, in France, I believe there are some people there, as well as on the internet. Uh, when we started working on this retail sector component of the Unido Kesset project, we were aware that there are many other good technical documents on energy efficient and low GWP refrigerate, refrigeration technologies. We are also aware that there are limited but successful examples, such as the Brazil case that was presented today, uh, of the technology installation of uh, non HFC installations in uh, developing countries. Uh, therefore, we, uh, for our project, uh, we became uh, interested in looking into how the four stakeholders that we identified, how they interact while they successfully deliver the technology changes. Uh, namely, as a supermarket manager and also technology supplier, the international or local, uh, like Mr. Rogelio's company, and also uh, uh, service ma maintenance, uh, maintenance service providers and also the consultants. Um, so those, those, those interaction of those state, four stakeholders, uh, we uh, analyzed uh, in our case studies, um, then also based on the survey, which revealed uh, somehow that the local suppliers and also maintenance service technicians 
important, uh, as also Mr. Roger you, uh, just mentioned now. And uh, um, the most important, of course, barrier was the investment cost, as presented by uh, Ms. Ina today. So, and also the, the survey was also um, underlined the importance of uh, more local example needed. So I'm really glad that uh, Mr. Rogelio's uh, pioneering effort uh, will be um, copied by other uh, companies. Uh, we really look forward to that. Uh, while, while we studied these uh, successful cases, um, among many typical barriers that we already know, uh, we noticed also there is always someone with passion. And I believe in this case, it is Mr. Rogerio. Um, and also the, 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 the supermarket manager in, 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 in Condor. So the, those are the people with great passion uh, to bring changes. They're open to the innovate, innovative ideas and those innovative, innovation-minded people uh, could, be the, uh, could be a maintenance service technician, could be Mr. Rogerio, uh, could be supermarket manager. So we try to identify those people with uh, uh, who are the, the change of uh, uh, change of change agent. Um, so that will be hopefully presented in the case study that we will post on the website. The link is uh, currently listed on on the slide. Uh, so sorry about the long link, but uh, uh, not now. But uh, it will be uh, listed there hopefully within a week or two. So please come back to that uh, link if you're interested in such case studies. So the, the decision-making tools and some case studies, uh, some of which were presented today, uh, this, yes, will be posted. And then you, as you also see uh, there, there was another component of this case project. So you can also hopefully uh, visit that website. Um, uh, to the end, I'd like to thank um, the KSEP, Kigali Cooling Efficiency Program, and also International uh, Institute of Refrigeration, and uh, Mr. Rogelio and the other colleagues. But, but also I'd like to particularly mention uh, Professor Judith Evan um, uh, in UK, who kindly uh, looked into this uh, particularly the decision-making tree uh, in, in details, and they gave us a great advice on how to revise it. Um, so I'd like to thank you for all, and I'd like to close the webinar. Thank you so much for everybody. Thank you very much. The webinar is finished now. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.